If you start out with a default blend file, what is the fastest way to animate any object? I'm looking for a fully three-dimensional animation with high precision and intentional movement. What's the fastest way? I've been thinking a lot about this and I want to show you my solution to this problem. Okay, so you know if you want to animate a cube in Blender, you simply give it a keyframe by pressing I. Here you can see I got a keyframe. You advance on the timeline, you change its location, and then you press I again, and Blender will interpolate the differences between these two positions, and you will get this smooth animation going from point to point. And if you want to be even faster, you can enable this auto keying button here. So now when you move it again, it will automatically generate the keyframe. But instead of having to manually move the timeline back and forth, an even faster way is to just let the timeline start playing. And then you can press G and you move the cube around and you can record keyframes in real time in the frame rate that you're currently in. And you might be thinking, that's it. This is the fastest way to record a 3D animation in Blender. But if you really think about it, this is actually not a 3D animation. It's just a 2D projection in 3D space. Just view it from the side in orthographic view, and it doesn't have any depth to it. Because when we recorded this animation with our mouse, our camera was placed over here. So we kind of projected a 2D animation from that point of view. So since most interactions with our computer will always be limited to drawing on a 2D canvas, we need to think outside the box here if we want to animate in all three axes. So I thought a lot about this, and the secret is the camera. So let's start out with a new blend file. Let's split our viewport in half. And then let's bring this up. Let's split it in half over here as well. Like this, and let's set this to the graph editor. And I want to set this to the camera. I'm going to zoom in here. And look at this button. If you have the gizmo enabled, you have this button here, which allows you to enable the view navigation within the camera view. This basically locks the camera to the viewport. So when we are orbiting around, the camera will follow. So let's click this little padlock here. And you can make it more wide angle if you want to. And look at this. If we move around now with middle mouse button, we are orbiting around and we are actually moving the camera in 3D space. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. If we now enable the auto keying and we press play, you can navigate around and you can record the movement of your camera in real time, which is just so cool. So now we have recorded the camera movement that we just did, and we can use Blender's tools for batch processing keyframes, like you can go key, density and you can bake the keyframes just to fill all the holes there and you can press alt s and smooth them a little bit with gaussian smoothing for example increase the filter width maybe even do a butterworth smooth there like that and look at this now we have a really smooth camera animation here that we just recorded in like six seconds or eight seconds actually but if we're being 100 percent technical this is actually still not 3d because if you think about it, what we just did was just to take an object and animate it around the pivot point. So you have the argument that that is still a 2D animation, just a different coordinate system. So how is it possible to make this actual 3D? Okay, I'm going to actually give you the solution now because it's pretty cool and we have almost done it already actually. So to show this, I'm going to visualize it with a geometry node setup I made. This is from my previous tutorial, by the way, if you want to learn how to make this effect, link in the description. So I'm just going to import this setup. So now I can full screen this if I press space and play. Here you can see we have the geometry node setup where I'm moving this empty object around and we have this trail that is following my cursor here. So it's a little bit easier to see that this is actually going to be 3D. So let's go to the first frame. Let's press Alt G to reset the location of this. And now here's the secret. Instead of moving this around in the static 3D viewport, we can use this dynamic one that we have created with the animated camera. So since the camera is rotating around like this, we are constantly changing the point of view and it's no longer a two-dimensional surface we are drawing our animation on. So let's simply select our controller here and let's click the record button and let's press space to play and G to move it. And look at that. Now we are actually moving this object around in 3D and it's so cool. Here you can see this controller is moving around in all dimensions and we actually have a lot of control here I'm going to show you in a second. Look at how cool that is. So yeah, if we want to try and do this again, we can just delete the keyframes. You can go Shift A, you can go Mesh, you can add a donut for example. And I'm just going to show you how much control we have here. Okay, so if you take this controller now, I want this to rotate and interact with this donut object. 
So let's go to the beginning. I've deleted all the keyframes. Let's press space and G. Look at this. Now I can move this around here and it's actually not intersecting. I do have pretty good control. Look at this. Now we have an object that was recorded in real time and it's successfully moving around the scene and being in 3D. I think this might be the fastest way I've seen yet at least to record three-dimensional movement in Blender. You just have to do it in two passes. You first do the camera and then you do the object. So I'm really looking forward to see what you'll create with this. Here's a quick time lapse of me just using this technique in an actual project. I'm doing this real-time animation and I'm smoothing the keyframes and maybe doing some adjustments. And then I'm importing some trees and bushes and grass from the botanic add-on and trying to make this into a nature scene. So I hope you find this workflow valuable. Thanks for watching.